Hi, this is David Kettlewell, and welcome to Medical Matters, because life matters. We're going to be talking today about something I know you'll be interested in, which is what are the ramifications of an aging population on health care in America? We'll be back in a moment. Let's go ahead and introduce our guests. We have with us uh, Pam Krasik. Mm -hmm. And you are with Community Health Foundation of Western Central New York. That's correct. Welcome to the show. We Thank have uh, Elder Emanuel Wiggins. That's correct. Welcome to the show. And you're with Erie County Home. That's correct. And we have Lisa M. Rood. Mm -hmm. And you're with Erie County Department of Senior Services. And Leilani Joven Pelletier. Morning. Thanks for joining us. What's happening with the demographics of the population in the next 10 years? And how's that going to impact health care? We're seeing a tremendous increase in the num older population, those over 65, and we're starting to also see a huge increase in the 85 plus population, um, a close to 36 percent increase, and those are the people who have greater levels of frailty. So basically a lot more persons over the age of 65 percentage-wise in the population. That's correct. Yeah. Bigger piece of the pie, older people. Yeah. Well, you have to realize we're also living in a baby boomer stage also. So in another 10 years from now, there's going to be a lot of baby boomers. And the key is, you know, the future belongs to those who can see it. And even with the statistics that we have concerning what the problem is um, as far as health care in western New York. I like your quote, the future belongs to those who can see it. Yeah. Where'd you, where'd you find that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know what is true, though, you know. I mean, if we, if we could look in the future, and fortunately, we can look at the future, and we can dictate what's going to happen. And so, in reality, we are in a stage of shock and emergency, I would say. Related to the challenges ahead in health care. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. okay. Definitely. And most people want to remain at home. Nobody wants to go live in a facility. And the folks that take care of them are going to need some help helping them maintain their independence. Lisa's, Lisa's absolutely right, especially as that 85 and older number mm -hmm. grows. Um, we have those medical needs to address mm -hmm. in, in certain ways. Um, our, my specialty is in dementia care, but the health care system is not prepared for the needs of these frail elders. Mm -hmm. And what we find more and more is that so much of that falls onto the family caregiver mm -hmm. that um, the people are not prepared for. So as we consider our own aging and our own aging health needs, especially the boomers, as mm -hmm. we learn how to take right. care of ourselves a little bit better, we're not only faced with mm -hmm. our own aging needs, someone 65 mm -hmm. could easily be caring for a parent that's 80, 85 mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. older. And so there's the health care system burden, and there's also the burden on informal caregivers. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it is a community-based yeah. problem. What can you tell me about the state of our nation's seniors' health. What kinds of health issues come up as you get over 65 years old? What are we seeing? I think you see a larger increase in chronic illness, um, things like disease, uh, diabetes, heart disease, um, stroke, and as people start to age, um, we've seen in the 85 plus population that most people have five of these chronic illnesses which complicate and lead to that type of frailty. Including things like arthritis. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Also, uh, an, a significant part of that uh, are medications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As people have uh, obtained more and more chronic illnesses, they're managed mm -hmm. with medications that are yeah. extremely mm -hmm. costly, very difficult to manage, and can sometimes mm -hmm. contribute to the complexity of exactly. someone. So, mm -hmm. we have an industry in this country around pharmaceuticals that um, is part of the mix. Again, there are many pieces to, to the complexity of this problem, and pharmaceuticals are one of them. Absolutely, medications can do wonderful, wonderful things, but they are complex and expensive, mm -hmm. and it's a big part of what seniors do face. Mm -hmm. uh, people are treated with medications. There's other ways to treat uh, chronic illnesses, but that's a big piece of it, so that's expensive. If we look at dollar flows in America for medical care, does the ages population use up proportionally more of those dollars than, say, teenagers? 
Yeah, well, you know, that's an interesting point that she made concerning as you get older, there are populations don't want to go to nursing homes, but also there's a population that don't have a choice but to go to nursing homes. Mm -hmm. But getting back to your question, even there was a study done concerning um, pace and um, mm -hmm. people to live outside of nursing facilities. The truth of the matter is cheaper to live in assisted living environment compared to living in a nursing home. One of the challenges and problems is getting it regulated according to statistics. It takes like five years in order mm -hmm. to even get the regulations for the mm -hmm. PACE program. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the challenges through government. Mm -hmm. All right. And even assistant living. Mm -hmm. um, she's right. There are many people that do want to live um, home. Mm -hmm. But the challenge comes in who's going to fund it. Right. Where are these monies coming from? And it is cheaper to live at home. And that's through Erie County Senior Services. We try to bring in services that can help folks stay living independently, whether it's Meals on Wheels, you're bringing nutritious meals um, at mm -hmm. lunch and at dinner, and you also have someone checking on that person that's living at home. We bring in home care, we bring in um, things to help the caregiver also, whether it's private counseling or our powerful tools for caregiver program, which uh, helps caregivers deal with the mental and emotional aspects of caregiving, which is huge. You want, you want your caregiver to be in good shape to take care of you, otherwise there's gonna be two people that need care. And many times we find spouses caring for spouses, and they're both elderly. Um, that opens up <laughs> all kinds of problems. Um, so you do want to maintain their health and their independence. And having family caregivers is definitely less expensive than any of the other aspects. And there are a few there are a few governmental supports or structural supports outside of organizations like. At Erie County Senior Services and all county senior services that make it possible for these family caregivers to really dedicate the time. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual for a working daughter to be a primary caregiver mm -hmm. who many times will have to uh, decrease the number of hours she's working or mm -hmm. leave her job entirely mm -hmm. to meet those needs. So each, the other challenge is that each family is different. So as we consider how we plan for our frail and aging population, we need to understand that as we're changing mm -hmm. again for mm -hmm. the baby boomers, that people do not want to be dependent mm -hmm. on a system. Mm -hmm. And helping them to maintain independence is good. And even with assisted living in our state, interestingly enough, someone that qualifies for assisted living level of care many times has to go to a much more expensive, higher level of care, skilled mm -hmm. nursing, mm -hmm. because there are not um, uh, subsidy programs uh, in place to significantly fund assisted living. So assisted living, which is less expensive and sometimes the best option for yeah. someone, mm -hmm. isn't even an option. Right. Right. They have to go to a higher level of care that's much more expensive. So our system is broken in that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the cost associated with the long-term care system, in many instances, if there aren't the other community supports or if a person does not have an informal caregiver with them, again, going into a long-term care facility at $7,000 a month, usually they wind up spending down most of their savings and then going on to a public-funded system of the Medicaid system. So the figures look like $80,000 a year you're saving in assisted living. But one of the problems is we at the Erie County Home um, recently submitted a grant um, to get a grant for assisted living and through red tape it was turned down and this would save mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so much mm -hmm. money and those are some of the issues that we face so in reality if we look in the future you're talking about more older people where are we going to go? Mm -hmm. One of the good news uh, things is that uh, the New York State Department of Health for example in my, my field of expertise has pulled together, has recognized uh, the impact that, for example, dementia has, the mm -hmm. cognitive uh, decline, which is so common, is going to have on the healthcare system. And they convened um, a coordinating council to advise the health department about what are we going to do about this. So there are different levels where people are taking notice. Um, and unfortunately, the people who are most knowledgeable about their needs as frail elders are the least likely to speak out about them and to be able to um, advise our politicians and our governmental structure mm -hmm. uh, wisely. So we have to speak for them. For more Medical Matters television shows, go online to medicalmatters.tv.